Hi everyone, this is Thea Lynn. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the classic novel Lord of the Flies by William Golding. And Lord of the Flies might have been assigned to you in high school. It may have been assigned to you in college. Maybe you took a law and society class. Maybe you just saw the movie, which was really excellent and had um, Balthazar Getty in it, I do believe. So anyway, Today we're going to talk about Lord of the Flies, and Lord of the Flies was published in 1954 about a group of schoolboys who are on a plane that's during a war, and they're shot down, and they end up stranded on a des deserted tropical island. It's with the struggle, with how they cope with leadership, laws, rules, and survival on this deserted island with no adult supervision whatsoever. You know, on, on many levels, um, the themes of law and society, order versus chaos, good versus evil, all these um, theories, they permeate this novel. Um, and I guess you could say it's allegorical fiction because it does kind of give you a moral. Golding had served in the Royal Navy during World War II, and he even fought in the Battle of Normandy. And, and just like anything with your life experience, I think it imbues itself into the novel. So the thought of the Battle of Normandy, I don't, he didn't actually storm the beach himself, but you imagine these children being tossed upon the beach during essentially a war. So there's your tie-in. The title of the first chapter, The Sound of the Shell, I loved that. I don't know if anyone has ever mentioned this, but it kind of sets the stage. If you take a seashell and put it up to your ear, they say, you know, through the way the ear is, is um, formed, that you can hear the ocean. But how about if you're already at the ocean and you pick up a conch or conch, however you want to say it, can you still be civilized? So I think that was kind of neat how the sound of the shell is the name of this first chapter. And that's what I got out of the titling of the chapter. This is set during a war when a plane of school children, they're shot down. Um, the plane has put, you know, burned a swath in the land, it scarred the land, and then a storm has kind of just dragged all the rest of it out to sea. It, and they're boys of various ages. They find themselves on what they think is an island. They're not 100% sure, and a chunky boy, he's bespectacled, he's asthmatic, and he's uh, nicknamed Piggy. He states what becomes obvious, that there's no, perhaps aren't, aren't any grown-ups anywhere. And yeah, that kind of sets the scene that there's no grown-ups and there's maybe no law and order. Like being lost in a daydream, 12-year-old Ralph, does his first move of freedom by doing a headstand. And so the novel is seen for a, a little bit in an upside down manner. Maybe we're in the upside down. So then Ralph, his second move of freedom is to strip nude because it's extremely hot on the island and he finds he really doesn't need his schoolboy uniform on. So since Ralph's father is a Navy commander, he thinks, oh gosh, we could probably be rescued. And, but Piggy throws water on that concept and he says, you know, we're on an island, we're probably on an island out in the middle of nowhere and they probably have no idea where we went down. So looking around the island, Piggy and Ralph discover a conch shell and they dig it out of the lagoon and Ralph blows it and it's like a trum trumpet signaling to the, all the other kids to like come and gather. So Piggy tries to take kind of like a census <laughs> of names and he of course comes up with himself, Ralph, um, Simon, toe-headed twin Sam and Eric, choir boys Jack Meridu, Bill Robert, Harold, Henry, and Roger, and there's a couple other unnamed uh, children. And they form an expedition party to determine if they're in fact on an island. So they go to the highest point of the island, and when they look, they can see sea on all sides. So yes, they are on an island. So they stumble across a little piglet in a creeper vine and it's all freaked out because it's never really kind of been around humans and it's just running around. And Jack decides he's gonna kill it for the meat and he uh, goes to kill it but he hesitates and then when he's questioned about why he hesitated in killing the piglet, he, he said he was just looking for the right place to strike and then next time there'll be no mercy is what he says. So it's kind of like a, a foreshadowing into the events to come in the novel. 
almost immediately upon arriving at the, at the island, there's the discussion about who, what needs to be done in order to survive in the interim before they're rescued. And kind of naturally, the leadership possibilities fall to the eldest of the group, either Ralph or Jack. And since Ralph holds the conch, he's kind of seen as the authoritarian figure and he's voted in um, beating choir boy Jack out of the position of chief. And a, the conch here is a symbol of democracy. It's a symbol of order, authority, and it's kind of used like a talking stick. Whoever um, holds the conch is allowed to speak. So they discuss other issues, like at Jack's suggestion, they discuss hunting pigs. They discuss how they look after themselves. They discuss whoever holds the conch speaks. They even discuss um, things like um, maybe the outside world has no idea where they're at. That's what Piggy kind of puts forth. And Ralph says it should be just like Treasure Island and that while they're waiting, they should try to have some fun. So at first, Ralph is kind of looking at this kind of like a, just a short interim issue, uh, you know, before they're rescued and that, you know, they should maybe just have a little fun. But he kind of changes his mind. One little boy with a birthmark on his face claims he saw a beastie in the dark that wants to eat him. So then it starts the legend of the beastie and the other kids are kind of dubious about the beastie, but then the beastie's legend grows. On a mountaintop, they create a fire to make smoke signals in order to be seen by any kind of passing ship or plane. And right from the beginning, Ralph and Jack hold counter opinions about what's more important, keeping a fire lit with, for the smoke signals or hunting for pig, which he believes is necessary for their survival, and that they're maybe not even gonna be rescued anyway. So that's where you get kind of a counter opinion going in the novel. It's decided that two boys will be on fire watch and they'll rotate the fire watch out through the night. And Simon then works with Ralph to build the shelters. The group is generally composed of little ones and big ones. The little ones can be as young as six years old and the big ones as old as 12 years old. And the little kids survive on eating fruit, playing around, they don't do a lot of manual labor, and crying in their sleep for their mommies. And within them, the legend of the beastie is retold and there, there's a kind of a suggestion that maybe the island isn't really good. But Piggy counters, it really is, there's nothing to fear except for the people. And he's the first one to kind of voice that out loud. Piggy keeps suggesting kind of modern ideas or, or ideas that are more creature comforts. He even suggests a sundial so they'll know what time of day it is. I mean, like it matters on an island. And then kind of the outcast due to his weight, his asthma, his morality, things like that. His dislike of manual labor for one. The democracy seems to work pretty well until the day that a ship passes by and the fire has gone out and nobody sees the signal. Basically, Ralph sees the ship and sees that the fire has gone out and he is not happy. What had happened is that Jack has recruited the two fire tenders, Sam and Eric, the twins, to go hunting with him for pig and the ship goes by, doesn't see any kind of smoke signal and goes on and Ralph is basically furious. Ralph clenches his fist, he starts kind of becoming bitter. He wasn't bitter really up until this point. Um, he chastises all of them for failing to tend the fire, failing to keep watch. It sparks an argument and a debate between Jack and Ralph and because Jack just chafes at being told what to do. He doesn't want to be told what to do by anybody anymore. And Ralph sees fire tending as tantamount to being rescued. And Jack doesn't really even believe they're going to be rescued anyway. And so he'd just rather hunt for Pig. So when Piggy butts into the conversation or the debate or the fight almost at this point, Jack punches him and the opinionated Piggy, he knocks him down and it breaks as one of the lens of his glasses. So they continue to have what's called assembly. Ralph will blow the conch and all the kids hearing the sound come. And Ralph kind of starts seeing his own shortcomings as a leader. Um, he notices that Piggy has more intellectual maturity than he does. And fundamental statements to the group have to be told at least twice. I mean, we have six year olds in this group. So Ralph feels that he needs to set things straight 
at assembly, like making sure they have water always gathered so that they don't become dehydrated, that they have the proper supplies, not letting the darn fire go out. Um, he tells them only to cook fires up on the mountain and not have little small cook fires on the beach or anything to an order to ensure that someone's always up there on that mountain, they're always tending the fire, so go up there to eat when you need to eat. And, and people are really not that super jazzed about being told to do that. But then one night, the twins come and they just insist they've seen the beastie. And they argue about who can possibly catch it or capture it. And Ralph and Jack, they go on this mission to a mountain they end up calling Castle Rock. And in an unexplored area, there's this cave and they think they see maybe possibly where this beast lives, but they get freaked out and they run away. So Jack attempts a coup. He gets the conch, he blows it. And all the kids come and he talks about how the, they'd seen the beast and that Ralph was a scaredy cat, he's a coward, he's not a true chief, um, that he needs to be the chief. So he wants another vote and he loses the vote which causes even more enmity between he and Ralph. We have a kind of a schism into like the more lawless hunting group and the group that wants to keep it with the rules and the laws and the regulations and the old ways. So Jack's group, Ralph's group. But in a sense, it's still democratic. Why? Because the people that leave Ralph's group to go join the hunters do so of their own free will. So it's still two democracies at that point. Those that leave Ralph's group to go join Jack's group go and they form their own little kind of society up on Castle Rock. And the other folks that stay with Ralph's group stay at their initial landing spot. In the following days, the defecting people, the defecting group, the hunting group is, is initially seen to be having more fun. They're out there chasing down wild pig, they're doing dances, they're running amok, basically. They're reenacting the kills they make, and they're just having a grand old time while Ralph's group is kind of getting tired of the responsibility of tending the fire and building the shelters, and so some of them leave to join Jack's group. But since the hunters are too busy beating the bushes for pig to man their own fires, their fire goes out, and then they end up having to go back to the responsible group for fire, and at first they, tr they just go and they ask for it. They borrow the fire, but then they end up stealing the fire, and the fire is not created the old-fashioned way with flint and kindling. It's created with Ralph's glasses. So what ends up happening is Jack's hunting group attacks Ralph's group as they sleep, attacks them, kind of fights them, and steals Piggy's glasses for fire. Not good. The hunting group has the might versus right mentality, and they go about mocking people and bullying people to get what they want. The escalating violence in the hunter's group is even seen in how they, when in their violence towards the pigs and the smearing of the blood on their faces to make them seem like warriors, and their breaking out in these really aggressive dances, celebrating their kills. And also with their bullying and their stealing. Jack's group, the hunting group, kill a boar and they sharpen a stick at both ends, which means they sharpen it, they drive the stick into the ground, and they put the boar's head on the stick and they leave that as a sacrifice to the beastie outside the cave. And they pull the entrails out Spoiler alert, it's kind of gross. They pull the entrails out and leave it there, and then the fat black flies come on the entrails as flies do, and that's kind of how you get the title of the novel, The Lord of the Flies, because it's feasting on the entrails for the beastie.